Welcome to the very first Elixir Health and Wellbeing Inspire series online. We've done plenty of these in store, um, but this is the very first one that we've done online. And over the coming months, we'll be interviewing some fabulous people, both in the industry and also some of our customers to explain their stories, which you will find both inspirational and informative. And you can view them at your leisure on our YouTube channel. Um, so whether it be uh, nutrition, exercise, or trying to um, find uh, the solution to the condition that you've got, whether that's arthritis right the way through to um, sleep deprivation, uh, we'll be able to provide a talk for you. So today's Elixir Inspire event is all about nutrition. And we are delighted and honoured not only to welcome to the team at Elixir, but also to this Inspire event, and that is Sarah Kirkham. And Sarah is a qualified nutritional therapist. She's released 13 fabulous books. And we at Elixir know nutrition is one of the main elements to providing yourself with good health. And following this video, we'll give you the opportunity to book an appointment either via Zoom or once COVID is over, fingers <laughs> crossed, um, we'll be able to provide face-to-face -face meetups. So please keep watching for details of how this can happen. We'll describe it at the end. We'll also put it in the description in the YouTube channel and it will also go out on our social media outlets. Um, but without further ado, um, thank you for coming, Sarah. Really delighted to have you on this video. And the first question is going to be, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you personally got into nutrition. Okay, so uh, yes, and I'm really, really pleased to be part of the Elixir team as well. Really, really happy to, uh, to sort of join you guys. So I got into nutrition um, from, I was in health and fitness originally working in gyms and obviously nutrition was a big part of that, but I started to find that um, magazine articles and even books were contradicting themselves. So I would read one thing and it would say something and then you know, you'd find a contradicting um, sort of information in something else. And so I decided the only way that I was gonna truly know what was what was to study nutrition. So I first did, um, a diploma in nutrition it was a diploma in dietetic therapeutics so degree equivalent very holistic um, uh, so that enabled me to practice but it just it wasn't enough for me I wanted a more science background so I then did uh, an honours degree in nutritional medicine which gave me the, the science and the detail that I was looking for um, and got into it that way excellent so Typically, when you're speaking to customers, and we speak to customers all day, every day, and we see all kinds of different ailments, etc. But, you know, what kind of things do people come to a nutritionist specifically for, do you find? Um, I, see, I see a lot of people for help with weight loss um, and just trying to maintain weight loss as well. Um, equally, I see quite a few people who want to gain lean weight as well. So sometimes that's people who are going to the gym and wanting to gain lean tissue, lean muscle tissue, or just people that have lost a lot of weight, um, maybe through health disorders and need to, to gain lean tissue. Um, I see a lot of people for digestive disorders. So that is probably the most, um, the most common ailment that, that I see people for. And of course that splits out into lots of different um, conditions. So heartburn, acid reflux, um, bloating, um, people have issues, you know, if they've had the gallbladder removed, for instance, issues with digestion, um, issues with bowel function, stool formation, um, and of course this encompasses food intolerances as well. So uh, I see a lot of people for food intolerances and suspected food allergies. Um, so I'm, I actually work some of the time in conjunction with York Test Laboratories as well. So um, I, I use their York Test um, kit for, for the intolerance test, which has 98% reproducibility. So it's 
the gold test of food intolerance testing. Um, so that's that's a really common thing that I would yeah. see. Um, and then all sorts of things. Um, one of my favorite things is helping people with blood sugar irregularities and diabetes. Okay. Um, I actually did my dissertation on diabetes, the effect of right. cinnamon on, uh, on hyperglycemia. So that's a favorite thing because I, I love things that we can test along the way for as well. So we can check the efficacy uh, and the effectiveness of whatever the diet plan, whatever the supplement plan is. So we know we're going the right direction. Of course, with diabetes, you can test blood glucose levels, HbA1c, um, so that's great. And another favorite is cholesterol. So uh, people with high cholesterol levels and bringing that down, which is a great alternative to statin medication, which so many people are on, so many people don't get on with it or just don't want to go on, on to it in the first place. Uh -huh. So that's another favorite. Um, but you, you really, you know, diet has such a profound effect on every aspect of health. It is true. You are what you eat. Um, no, no. So, uh, you know, I would see people with every aspect of, of health issues. So insomnia is quite, quite prevalent. Um, it's funny. And so many people don't base that on their diet, do they? No, not at all. And yet there's so many things you can do. You know, I mean, I with insomnia. I start off with, with the basics, which is, um, you know, just looking at caffeine, for instance, and because of my background as well, I take a very holistic approach to everything. So I also will look at things like exercise, for instance. I don't prescribe exercise in any detail because that's not, even though I'm still qualified in exercise, uh, it's not my my sort of thing now. But um, I'm very much looking at all the pillars, if you like. So stress management, um, you know, exercise, um, sleep, um, you know, hydration. So it's not just about diet. It's taking everything into account. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'll see a lot of people with insomnia, headaches, migraines, skin conditions. So eczema, psoriasis, mm -hmm. um, acne. Um, autoimmune health as well so a whole range of autoimmune conditions chronic fatigue is quite a common one because um th there's just no medical route for that really you might get the diagnosis but yeah. then where do you go from there yeah um so that that's quite a common one arthritis as well um so all all the sort of inflammatory conditions and we're starting to see that doctors now are starting to say go and see a nutritional therapist or or have a conversation about nutrition because they realize the importance of those lifestyle changes are you finding yeah. that yeah. yeah a little bit it's been very slow coming because obviously within the nhs we have state registered dietitians so that is that's your gp's first you know normal sort of go-to for anything diet related mm -hmm. but the the state registered dietitians um work in a very different way although there's a big overlap between the science of what we do as private nutritionists and and what state registered dietitians do um we work in in quite different ways as well so i think doctors now are embracing more um more of the things that a nutrition nutritional therapist can can bring so okay so uh what do you feel is the key to good general health um i think i mean this is so topical at the moment um because i think covid19 has really um enabled a lot of people to focus on health a lot more you know people have had more time i've actually been busier um this year than you know previous well ever before really um and i think a lot of it is that people have had the time to stop and think actually um, you know, I'm, I'm going to get this little niggling thing that's been irritating for ages. I'm going to get it sorted out or they're at home more so they can really look at the diet and maybe 
prepare things more from from scratch um and they're not sort of you know rushing around at 100 miles an hour anymore um if they're on furlough for instance so um i think uh, immune health is is really important and obviously lots of different ways in which you can boost immunity i like to take an approach that's multifactorial so i might look at bowel flora health probiotics prebiotics mm -hmm. which is the food for the uh, for the bacteria you know might look at something like vitamin yeah, can c can you just explain just hold on that just explain a little bit of the difference between a prebiotic and a probiotic we hear a lot about it but it can be a little bit confusing with the science between the two. Yes, absolutely. And and now we have this phrase called postbiotic as well. Yeah. <laughs> just to just to just uh, to throw another one. <laughs> even more. So the probiotics are the good bacteria in the gut, uh, predominantly in the bowel, in the colon, um, also known as the commensal bacteria. And these um, little organisms actually keep us healthy. So they um, produce lots of um, metabolites, lots of substances that actually help our hormone health, help mental function, which is really always important, but yeah. it seems to be even more important at the moment. So the probiotics are the actual bacterial strains themselves, and prebiotic is the food that those probiotic bacteria need to feed on. So prebiotic um foods are essentially fiber so it's fruit and veg it's grains especially whole grains it could be um, beans pulses lentils that whole group of foods um, and i have a, a thing um called my 50 food challenge um, right. which is basically the challenge is to try and consume 50 different plant foods in a week so things like meat dairy um, eggs and uh, fish aren't counted because they don't have fiber in them so they can have different benefits for for our health but they don't they don't provide um, direct benefit for the bowel flora so we just want to focus on the plant foods for this challenge um, and the idea is to have 50 different plant foods in the diet because that provides diversity and that's really important because it feeds different bacterial strains. Yep. So for instance, someone might take a probiotic and that might just contain lactobacillus acidophilus, which is you know, one of the main well-known um, commensal bacteria. But we need a lot more than the lactobacillus strains in the gut. We need the bifido as well and, you know, dozens of others. So a diverse diet um, actually feeds lots of different bacterial strains and makes sure that you've got a really good broad culture of bacteria in the gut. And this isn't just talking about immune health. This also helps with things like irritable bowel as well where people just can't work out why they've got an irritable bowel and it's, it's directly linked to this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, making sure that um, the bowel flora is healthy is key. It, it's the cornerstone to everything else, to be honest. If, if your bowel flora is not healthy, then everything else we do, I say it's a bit like a stick in plaster um, because you have to get the bowel flora in, in the right place for ongoing good health. So um, a wide range of foods is, is really important for that. And, you know, because we've had such an increase in, in suspected food intolerances and, you know, people with IBS, which is a, you know, that, that's a label that means, well, we don't really know what's wrong. So you yeah. haven't got an actual cause for that. It could be lots of different causes. Um, so the, the bowel flora and a diverse diet is a good place to start because so many people take things out of the diet. So the diet just becomes narrower and narrower. And then people are left thinking, well, what, what can I eat? Because, it, you know, it seems like everything they eat is upsetting the, the stomach or causing symptoms. Uh -huh. So it's really good to get a, a, a diverse diet in play where you can. Excellent. Um, so 
taking all of that into into account, what are your uh, top tips that you would give people to improve their health? Um, I think so. That that's definitely one of the the top things: eating a diverse diet, and also within that, a wide range of colours in the diet. Mm -hmm. So ideally you're looking for, you know, dark green leaves. So things like spinach, watercress, rocket, um, the cruciferous vegetables offer a lot of health benefits. So broccoli, cauliflower, um, sprouts, um, then you, you know, moving on to the sort of purples and deep reds, um, resveratrol, which is, you know, really important nutrient to get in the diet. Moving on to the oranges, you've got beta carotene and all the whole carotenoids, flavonoids. All, all of these are what we call phytonutrients, which are plant nutrients. Um, and they're, they're not vitamins or minerals. They're not yet deemed as essential nutrients, but we absolutely know that they support good health. So the wider variety of foods you've got in the diet and the wider variety of colours you've got in the diet, so literally a rainbow diet, generally speaking, the better health is going to be because you're getting all the different nutrients that you need for good health. So that, that would be my, my first go-to if someone didn't have any specific health ailments and just wanted a diet makeover, just wanted a diet check, you know, that would be the first thing to do. So with this uh, video, we've got a download document, uh, which is a 50 day challenge, which you'd like people to partake in. <laughs> it's, well, it's a 50 food challenge. Yeah. You can do it over 50 days, uh, uh, absolutely. I food. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, so it's, it's a really simple sheet, you know and with 50 boxes on and you just write down every different plant food that you eat you just write it write it down as you eat it you can only count every food once so if you have um some Weetabix on a monday morning you can write down wheat because that's obviously you've consumed that but if you then had a sandwich at lunchtime you can't write down wheat again because you've already had it so because you can only write down each food stuff once that helps you to find different foods and improve the diversity um, and each food that you write down should be a portion size as well so a portion size is basically a handful um, so um, you, you'll be including all types of fruit all types of vegetables beans pulses lentils all of the grains, so things like wheat, oats, rice, barley, millet. Um, you can also include herbs and spices because they're also very good for us. Mm -hmm. um, unlikely to have a handful in one go. <laughs> um, Don't fancy a cinnamon you, challenge, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you're using something all through the week then put it down because you're only putting it down once anyway and it you know if you're using something regularly then that's going to be a part of the diet um mm -hmm. so and and just see where you get to it, we all eat the same things over and over um we have our favorite foods um so you probably will find that you might get up to about 20 or 25 foods within the first day or two days and think yeah this is great i'm, I'm gonna smash this 50 food challenge but then you might find that you come to a, a grinding halt on day three because you might be having the same breakfast every day or then you'll discover you're actually eating the same foods over and over cool. so if someone's got 30 foods in the diet in a week 30 plant foods that's great um but it's a starting point just try and build on it for sure so if you want to give this a go have it download it off our facebook page and give it a go and put it in the comments on our facebook page and just let us know how you're getting on that would be great so second tip what have you got for us second tip i would say um is going with uh, uh, hydration so drinking plenty of water so it's such a simple thing but probably one of the main things that we all don't do um, so 
uh, such a high percentage of people in the UK are chronically dehydrated most of the time. Um, simplest way to tell is just the colour of your urine. So it should be a pale straw colour, should be plentiful. So if it's anything darker than pale straw colour, then that means you're already dehydrated. Um, effects of dehydration will be, uh, it might be just, you know, forgetfulness, can't focus properly, um, ranging through to headaches um, and, you know, dry skin. And then the list goes on, Lot, lots of, um, you know, sort of different effects on health. Um, and it's so you, easy to slip out of that, isn't it? You just absolutely. start going through yeah. your day, you're busy working, you go, oh, I haven't drunk all day. Exactly, exactly. And I see people in, in certain, I mean, certain professions, lots of jobs where, you know, people who are driving a lot tend to not drink much because they, they don't want to be having to stop the car every 10 miles or whatever to, to have to pull over and, and go to the loo. Um, you know, people in working in nursing in hospitals or, you know, shift work, factory work, um, teachers, you know, so many different professions where you're just running about all the time and they, they just forget to drink. So there, there's some really, really simple things you can do. Um, everything that I do in a consultation, I don't just give people an optimum nutrition diet and, and send them on the way and, you know, say, go and, go and get on with it. I work with people to help them make these changes because if you can't actually make the practical changes then you know you, you're going to be nowhere with the new diet so things like just filling up a water bottle a liter and a half or a two liter water bottle and you know sticking that on your desk and then you've got a measure of how much water you've drunk for the day um, or starting off the day with something like a mug of hot water with a bit of lemon in it nice and refreshing um, and you've already had maybe you know a fifth of your water requirement for the day just by doing that um you know having a water bottle with you in the car maybe uh, so there's, there's so many little things you can do that actually make this a lot easier really good tip yeah i'll, I'll, I'll do that on myself i'll definitely start walking around with a bottle through the day yes. um, so your third tip Third tip, um, well, we've talked about a little bit already actually because that would be diversity. So that comes back to the 50 food challenge and the rainbow colour um, yeah. of foods in the diet. And it's so important because it feeds the microbiome. And I, I do find in, in today's um, sort of environment that there's so many people that are cutting food groups out um, and narrowing the diet and sometimes you need to do that but quite often you know it, it might be that it's narrowing the diet too much um, and then you end up with even more food intolerances or suspected intolerances because you've got you know too many things out yeah absolutely keep it as diverse as it possibly can be I mean obviously if someone's had a food intolerance test I'll be working with them on the results of that. And there may be certain foods that we need to cut out, um, but you would only be looking to cut them out for a certain period of time. And then gradually the idea is that you bring them back in. Um, so uh, if anyone's out there and they've had a food allergy test or a food intolerance test in the past and left, took something out of the diet and it's, it's still out 10 years later, then it might be time to reintroduce it and just, just see how you get on with it. Cool. And your last tip. Uh, last tip is um, to, to eat, yeah, a, a rainbow diet actually, which we've already talked about. Um, so literally going through all the colours of the rainbow. So we've talked a little bit about the greens and the reds, the purples and the oranges. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, you have got foods which don't aren't colourful, so things like garlic and onions, for instance, um, but they still bring so many health benefits to the diet. So 
the garlic and onions, for instance, are packed with sulfur compounds, which is what gives them their, their sort of smell. Um, and those sulfur compounds are used in the liver for detoxification. So the, these are just great foods to make sure that you've got in the diet for liver support, liver function. Um, unfortunately, they are also high FODMAP. So FODMAP is something that I work with a lot. Um, a lot of people I'm sure have heard of a, a high FODMAP diet or a low FODMAP diet and garlic and onions are, are sitting there in the high fructose group. Um, I hate taking garlic and onions out of anyone's diet because uh, they're, they're so good for us. But again, it may be that you need to take them out for a little while, figure out why someone's struggling with high FODMAP foods, fix that problem and then bring them back in. Yeah. So nutritional therapy is all about getting to the root cause of the problem. It, it isn't just, oh, you've got high cholesterol, so take phytosterols, or, oh, you've got IBS, so let's go on a, a low FODMAP diet. My, my job is really to try and figure out what is causing the symptoms, what is the problem, and fix the problem. Um, that, that is what nutritional medicine is, is all about. Excellent. Okay, I've got one more question uh, in terms of prepping meals um, for certain people. So when yeah. they come and see you, will you sit down with them and, and help them prep meals throughout, throughout their week? Absolutely. So everyone that comes to see me for, for weight loss or for nutritional therapy um, goes away with a, a full plan. So, and that includes an eating plan. Um, so that will be completely individual to them. So if they're vegan, if they need to be gluten free, if they hate fish, <laughs> whatever the thing is, or if they're on shifts, um, I will work with them to create an eating plan that they can follow. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I do that because otherwise it, people are lost sometimes. Okay. Excellent. I'm looking down because I'm looking at the clock and it is coming up to the half hour point. So thank you, Sarah, for your time. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. And if you want to book an appointment, whether that's for testing, uh, just to see if you feel that you have got a food allergy, or you want to book an appointment with the lovely Sarah, then you can email us at office at elixirhealth.co.uk, or you can instant message us through Facebook, or you can call the store on 01208 814500 and we'll take the bookings there for you and we can book it as a Zoom call, unfortunately, at the moment, but hopefully in the future we can get them as face-to-face. -face. And all this information will be in the Facebook um, comments and it will also be in the description below on YouTube. So thank you very much and thank you, Sarah, and we'll see you soon. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.